I woke up one morning about two or three months ago, feet came down on the floor. Why didn't I think about that before? And of course, Carlos is saying, what is he getting on with again now? What's he up to now? What's going on? There is another way to get through the court system faster than having to go through the trial division of the Supreme Court of the Problems, the appeal division of the Supreme Court of the Problems, then to the Supreme Court of Canada. There's a faster way, because that's going to take three or four years. Our country is quite likely to be gone by then. Our democratic country, our rights and freedoms are quite likely to be gone by then. This is called the reference procedure, which I had forgotten about, and just about every lawyer in the country forgot about, as I found out later. And so I started to think about it, and I remembered I used it when I was Premier in Newfoundland back in the middle 80s. And this is a, a procedure every single Premier and the Prime Minister has the power tomorrow to refer their pandemic measures to their highest court to see if it's constitutional. They can do that tomorrow. So I wrote a letter to all the premiers. I didn't write it to the prime minister because I know that was just a waste of time altogether. But I thought there might be one of 10. There might be one or two of 10 that still got some sanity about them and that would do this. And I wrote them and I said, listen, I don't know if you know or not, but you have the power through your cabinet to pass a, a minute and refer your COVID measures, these draconian measures, these unconstitutional measures in my view, um, to your own highest court and get a constitutional ruling. Not one premier has taken me up on that. Not one. Not one. Most of them didn't even reply. Those that did reply was an electronic reply. I'm sick of machines. I'm sick of getting a reply from a machine. I want to be a human. It was so new that a group of lawyers and other important people in Ontario heard about it through my blog, I guess, and, and uh, said, holy smoke, and these lawyers themselves, that is, is this true? So of course they checked it out, and sure enough, this could be done. So they called us up, and we went down to Ontario, Carol and I, paid for by these people down there, brought us down, paid our expenses, and sat down with these lawyers and other quite high up important people in Ontario for six, seven days, I guess, five or six days, and uh, talked to them, and of course, they, they agreed, yeah, this can be done. And so they set up a, a website called lawyersstandup.ca, which you can go in and take a look at, and you'll see videos of me saying what I'm saying here tonight about that reference question, if you want to know more about it. And you can also sign up saying, why not, why not do this? That's uh, lawyersstandup.ca. And uh, so, the, the, that's ongoing right now. So there's a lot more people know about that procedure and know just how uh, silent our premiers are, and how silent and how obnoxious and how arrogant they are. They can't, they can't even sign their name to a reply back to a former first minister. I mean, that's how bad it is. And it just happens to be the first minister who was there to help craft the Constitution in the beginning. I think they're scared myself. I think they're scared. I think they're scared because what happens in this procedure, which some of the lawyers tried to catch me on down in Ontario, but which I rec recognized overnight and jumped on the floor again the next morning, this time four o'clock in the morning, because they, they, they thought they had a, a way that this couldn't happen. But they were wrong because they were looking at the normal court proceedings. This is not the normal court proceedings. This is a direct reference to the appeal court. And the judges of the appeal court then decide how the case is going to be handled. If you go by precedent, what happened in my time and other references like this over the years, the judge allows a whole bunch of interveners to come in and there's a big debate about it from both sides, not just the way it's been happening now, from both sides. And quite likely we would get a really, really, really good hearing on this one. And of course the premiers can't put up with that, right? Because the mountain of evidence today medically, forgetting about the d democracy side of it, Right, it's two, two sides of this. One is the democracy side, where everything is being violated. The other one is the medicine side, right? Where the mountain of evidence today is totally against what the governments are doing. They can't stand the, the, they can't stand the independent science that is available. All the way from, we knew right from day one, the PCR test didn't work, right? We knew that was 95% wrong, right? We know that the masks, 400 studies, 
Dr. Paul Alexander put out the other day that I put on my blog, 400 studies showing that this is a waste of time. This is crazy, right? And so on it goes, and it's been built up over the last almost two years now. So they're afraid. They're afraid that the, the, the ground that they're now standing on is no longer made of rock, it's made of sand and it's crumbling and therefore they've got to stay with what they got. So I think these are the reasons why we're in the dilemma we are. Part of it our own fault because we allowed the governments to go from being a parliamentary democracy to being a prime minister led autocracy or whatever you want to call it, aristocracy or whatever. And, and at the same time the media and the, and, the, and the big tech and the pharma have been taken over and are dictating to what used to be good leaders in our country. And so it's now back to us, it's now back to us as individuals to fight for our own freedoms and to fight for this country to restore and restore it to a parliamentary democracy. Without us doing that now over the next few months, the chances of us getting that change go downhill very fast. But I think there is starting to be a movement where people are starting to wake up and starting to see that, you know, a lot of this stuff is crazy and we've got to stand up and we're, you know, we're losing our rights and our freedoms. So with your help over the next while and people like you all over the country, perhaps we can turn this around and make this a people's revolution, something for us to be proud of for our children and our grandchildren.